Welcome to the weekly Threat Insights group discussion. We've got a number of items on our agenda today. Oh, and some were added since I looked yesterday. Savash and Alexander, I didn't get to see your guys' demos yesterday when we looked. So we don't have any follow-up from previous discussions. So unless if anyone wants to bring anything up right now, some of it might fall down into planning breakdown. Some of those are, I think, maybe repeat visitors. All right. Uh, Savash, adding, attaching an issue to a vulnerability. So this is about displaying the issue in the dashboard view, right? Not because I know we have upcoming changes around uh, yeah. related issues. Cool. Yeah, um, th there is a bug, uh, but it's already fixed by uh, Alexander. Uh, I'm not sure if that's merged. Uh, that was an MR. So as soon as but the, the bug is that when you hover on the issue, it doesn't show the the pop up uh, the pop over um, the tool team. Now these are the smart icons that show you whether the issue is closed or not. Is that right? Sweet. Yes. I like smart icons. And then the second one is uh, sticky filters on the dashboards. <laughs> you can scroll until your heart's content. That's awesome. Yeah, and more sticky things uh, on the way, such as the uh, table header and stuff like that. Uh, that is in review. Okay, so right now the filters will stick, but the headers will disappear. Uh, in the future, they'll all stick. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Zoom needs reactions for sticky things, which I don't know what that would be like. I don't even think we have Slack emojis for sticky things, because that sounds kind of gross. All right, we are on to planning breakdown. Thank you, Savash and Alexander, for sharing the demos. Matt, do you have any questions, observations? Ah, lost my zoom window. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Looks awesome. I'm excited about the uh, the header as well. That's one that I know has gotten added fairly recently to things like you know, some of the issues in the MRs, even since I've been here, and that has made a super big difference. So great to get stuff like that early. All right. One call out is that the mobile view uh, doesn't lay out well with the pinned headers, so Alexander has been working with Andy on that and coming up with a, a good solution. Mm. That's true. <laughs> that is accurate. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> backing me on that. All right, like Ish <laughs> issues for planning breakdown. Um, so I added these first two because there's just been a lot of discussion and per our handbook, once you've gone back and forth a number of times, um, we should talk synchronously. It looks like somebody already answered my first question. I thought these were duplicates and which one should we close? So I already see that the 656 issue has been closed, which was the bug that was reported by Cam Eldon. And then we have sort of the, this was the original feature issue that was closed because it was verified. Um, the notify a user when a vulnerability is resolved, 207183. So there's a lot more information on here, but unfortunately that means you have to, you have to scroll a lot to get through it, I think, if I'm remembering this correctly. Um, so we've had this groomed already. And I'm, now I'm confused because of the two issues. I think we actually had the other one groomed. No, now I'm totally confused. Let's go back to the questions. So first question's answered, duplicate, which to close. Um, Alexander, do you want to, voice your observation? Uh, looks like a back end issue. But there's two and issues. Sorry. Wait, isn't the, Let me just share. so maybe I don't understand. Are these, I thought the top issue is supposed to be, is a duplicate of the second issue? I wasn't sure which one was a, which one should be closed out as a duplicate. I believe they both represent the same issue, the same root issue is that on the dashboard, once a uh, vulnerability has been resolved, we no longer see it in the default branch that we message to the customer in the dashboard view that, that is like a blue resolve label. I believe it still works on the standalone page. We're still showing the banner at the top of the standalone page. And at some point, this worked on the dashboard view, but it stopped working. And Alan is the person who has been looking into this. I'm seeing his nodding his head, and I want to let him talk out. Yep. Alan, what did you find <laughs> finding you dig into this? Because you were talking to me about caching and you know that the, the uh, Mihao's change was working, but what did you find when you dug into this? So 
So the, the main problem is that we are not returning that information to the front end. Um, so, and we, and this is happening because we don't have that in, in the type in GraphQL. So it's not available for you to, uh, to get single like information about, about each vulnerability when you're, uh, getting the list. And then I started digging, why do we, uh, we not have that? And I found that there is a method that is, uh, calculating that basically it does few calls to SQL, uh, to database to get that information. And um, and yeah, and then I started thinking, oh, we cannot do that when we are uh, like rendering a list. We need to do something more efficiently. So that's that's why I ended up with having having the the whole idea and bringing the risk uh, high and also getting the weight of the of the issue so high, because we are potentially touching the most critical like area of 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 GitLab. We want to be able to merge things. Um, so we, we will, we should not mess this up. That makes sense. Whenever I see a weight of an eight, Alan, the, my first question is, is there a way that we could break this down? Because that does feel very large. If it's based on risk, that might not be possible. But if you think that there's ways that we can do that, we should discuss that. Because that's the goal of planning breakdown, right? Yeah. So that's based only on the risk, not, not on the, okay. because the, the issue is quite small. Uh, it shouldn't take a like less than a week to, to resolve it, but but things that we need to check after it's merged, that's more complex and complicated. So that we need to just make sure that it works. Testing, edge cases, yeah. documentation, all of it. Uh, and can you confirm that this is only a backend issue? Do you believe that there's any front end work? If there will be any front end work, I, I will need to check if if in view do we have uh, a way to display that batch, but anyway, if there is a need to 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 do it, I believe even backend developers can do it. It's 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 very simple. So yeah, and I, I this was here before. Like we had this hooked up before at some point. So I, I know I've yeah. I've seen the badge on the dashboard, so it should be there. Um, I love this. It's so simple. Even a backend developer can do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for explaining that, Alan. Does anyone have questions around this? I have a few. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I guess the first thing is. I, my um, initial reaction is we should probably raise this from a P4S4 since it's been reported by several internal users and I think there was a customer support ticket on it. Um, it seems like a fairly low severity, but I think the, or, yeah, I'd probably like to bump the priority up potentially. Two, three? Yeah, I think a P, P2 for this one since we're already getting, um, it's causing I think downstream uh, reports of stuff. So by not being able to see that, this is where all the uh, the defect reports came in of saying, "Hey, resolve vulnerabilities are showing up on the dashboards." Yes, that's true, but we're not giving them an indication that these are things that can be um, marked as resolved and removed. Okay, I'm not sure where the fours came from. That might have been me. So I'm going to make would... this update. Oh, there's an unlabel. Wait, there's a. <laughs> Does, so I, I understand that P is priority and S is severity. Like, do they necessarily need to go hand in hand? They don't. That's a good question. And I just do that out of habit. So I can go and pull up the, here, let's just look at the definitions of the labels while we're all here. And we can watch Lindsay pretend like she can navigate things with this fun Zoom. Hey, there they are. They're right there. Oh, they're right at the top. Hey. Oh, those are, oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Alphabets are hard. All right. So, um, those give you the definitions right there and then oh, the S ones don't show. So I can switch over to the S ones after that, but these are the priority definitions. Okay. And then uh, it's just, I don't know how easy this can be. So <laughs> you can read them one at a time. Card? I know. Can I? I don't can know. Use a wild card. Heck no, you can't. Oh, well, yep. Right. Sorry. No, we can't. Because we're working good on Good question. <laughs> There's probably is there an issue it. for that. <laughs> yeah, is this known? All right, no, but it's a good point. So, you know, I switched that to an S2, P2. If you look at the broken feature, work around too complex, um, I would argue that that's accurate in this case. Yeah, because the workaround is you would have to click on each individual vulnerability to see if it had, in fact, been resolved. In mm, the cases where less you have than ideal. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right. all right. 
Okay. Also, Lindsay, I really like your that your way seems much more formal and appropriate. I actually just change the P and the S labels and then apply them and hover over them. And if I don't like what it says, I'll change it up or down. Well, I might do that when there's not a bunch of people on the call watching me. And I might have done that a couple of times yesterday, but <laughs> that's all right. Okay, um, so. Hold on, go I got one more question. Go don't go on. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, given, uh, Alan, what you pointed out about this being a, a fairly small piece of work, but very, very high risk in terms of uh, downstream consequences. Is there, are there other folks that we could leverage to help kind of maybe, uh, I want to say mitigate the risk, but give us higher confidence that we haven't broken anything? Like maybe the teams that are actually responsible for DMRs or even bringing in our, um, I believe we have a temporary stable counterpart from the QA team now. I, I forget the person's name, but are these things that are going to help in any way? I guess, or is that just adding more, or yeah, I don't know, more more overhead to it. Yeah, uh, I'll need to. I'm probably going to take it and start working on this one. And as soon as I'll be um, close to finish, uh, I'll see because that's only my impression, and maybe uh, maybe it will be lower risk. risk. I will see, but definitely I'll I'll try to to find someone from I'm not sure if from other team, but definitely a QA will will help us here. Um, like there are other things to mitigate the risk, like not do it in a synchronous way, but just delegate the work to some background worker, and it will do the work for us. So that means we'll not break anything. But the the only risk that will might happen is that we're gonna not have the label anyway, <laughs> so, so, so I'll, I'll I'll take a look. Definitely, uh, I'll I'll work on this one and and see how we can make it low low risk. Okay. And I mean, don't misunderstand. I I don't want to minimize that this is a very risky thing. I'm just wondering, is there any way that we can help take some of that off of your plate for this one? Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and again, that's why we're keeping this big to make sure that there's some more bandwidth of people to help as well. So, and time to focus on it. Great. Any other questions about that? Awesome. Thanks, Alan. All right, to link to an existing GitLab issue. So, this is a. Upcoming issue for 13.2. I'm not sure. Uh, Tiago mentioned in here that he thought it was blocked. What did, what did Tiago say? Pushing since this is primary backend. Okay, maybe I misunderstood that. All right, Hi. so hopefully you guys go ahead, Alexander. I understood it to be to being that there was a lot of backend discussion. Friend, if you scroll down, there seems to be a lot of backend discussion. Um, that oh, I took it to mean that there's more back end discussion needed. I don't know uh, if that's what you meant. Or somebody needs to uh, find a good blanket and a window box to sit and read this long discussion for the last year of I was going to say, you can <laughs> just scroll going on almost here. all the way to the bottom. <laughs> well, that was my first question about this issue. Has all of the outcomes of these discussions been reflected in the problem description? I don't want to say a hundred percent, but I think a lot of it has been. So it's definitely evolved since where it started in terms of uh, the designs. My fingers are getting really tired from scrolling now. <laughs> Wait, this is, here's Alan. This is two months ago. So now we're getting into at least the, the current iteration of our team looking at it. So that's good. Great so these are, JSON. sorry, what? Great looking JSON. I've seen a lot of JSON in my days. It's beautiful. All right. I got excited that we had a refinement state. Alexander started asking a bunch of questions. That's great. So this is questions around how the current create issue button plays in with all of this, right, Alexander? Correct. So we'd basically be moving it. It won't be up in the top corner anymore. It'll only exist here in this new real estate. Correct. And then the uh, resolve by MR and download patch will still live up in the corner. 
and we ditch the restriction of one issue created per vulnerability, right? We can now create as many issues per vulnerability as we want. I think the re resolution was that you can only create one issue still, but you can add as many, re you can relate as many as you want. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's exactly right with what Andy was saying. So we're going to keep that one to one, but you can relate as many others as you want to. So this create button is only there once. And once you've created it, it goes away. And then you can just add, it sort of seems unclear that between a, for a customer, an add issue versus create issue, I kind of feel like the same thing. <laughs> but that's mm. up for. Link? Yeah. I mean, it kind for of is. Issues. This is a, a bit of a shortcut to not having, um, I guess, an alternative at the moment, like having one remediation issue and then multiple MRs and that kind of thing. So we'll say we're just sort of deferring the conversation around one to many by giving you, you get one issue that's directly linked and the others are, I guess they're going to look to your point, Lindsay, they're going to look the same on the front end, but on the back end, they will be linked a little bit differently if I follow the conversation here correctly. The relationship with them will be different. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the future, the issue that you create from a vulnerability will be automatically, there'll be a relationship between the two. So if you close one, it'll affect the vulnerability and vice versa. All right, so we're kind of getting into me just asking a bunch of questions. What other questions do other people have? Go ahead. Isn't it already like that? Like the issue is one-to-one one -one with, uh, with the vulnerability? Because the the... Uh, the latest, um, the attach issue um, MI that I worked on, it assumes that it's like that. It, it's an array, but it takes the first one. So that's correct, right? I'm just double checking here. Currently, right? Today we have a strict one-to-one -one relationship between issues and vulnerabilities. This is asking us to, on top of having that one-to-one -one relationship, out. I don't say relationship that's wrong, but you could also relate other issues that were not created from that vulnerability. So what you're saying today is correct, Savash. In the future, that'll change because in addition to that, that one special issue, <laughs> you'll be able to relate other existing issues to it. All right. Uh, Alexander had a good question about sort of what's available on the back end. Back end. It looks like uh, Mehmet has answered that. Do we have other questions, you know, kind of going back to our planning breakdown goals here? Are the requirements clear enough to understand the intents of the requests? Do we understand the boundaries? Research solution validation complete? And is it small enough? So I think, Lindsay, this was one that I left a comment on last night for you and Thiago. Yeah, I guess at this point, is it ready to move forward? It sounded like the the discussion had gotten to a point where it felt like we were ready to break out smaller issues. So I think that's actually, a question for everybody. Go ahead. Actually, after like looking at this and scrolling all the way down, I thought there was more comments after mine, but there are not. They were all above mine. And so uh, from the front end, it looks good. And now, uh, now I have no idea what Tiago meant about what where it is left for this, so seems good to me. I mean, I guess the question that I have is, is this one issue actionable within an iteration or do we need to move it into multiple separate issues? Back in perspective it is. I believe most of it, it's, it's done. Macman already did, did that in, in GraphQL and I did that two months ago in the REST API. So it's all there. Twice. Hey, we'll just, uh, we'll have it up uh, by the end of the day. <laughs> so I think then that question goes to the front end. So Savash and Alexander, do you guys feel like from a front end perspective, we should break this down further? Are there any clear points of division where it would make sense that we could deliver some piece of functionality and then another one if it was too big? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first, just like moving the create issue button down and creating that box 
I mean, obviously we can, we can add this box and the create issue without being able to add issues. Uh, that might be like mm. the fastest win or vice versa, like create the add issue button and then be able to add them here. Um, I don't know. I think that seems doable. So first idea being basically replicating the existing functionality with a different UI that starts to match this one, right? Remove it from up here, bring it down here. Don't have the add issue, but just be able to create and display the created issue in this look and feel. Yep. And then the second one would be the multi, the, the, the relationship or relating issues. Yeah, correct. Yeah? Um, Savash, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's sounds good. Okay, so then I guess I'm a little unclear if there is some back end work to do. We we kind of get into this place now and we want to split things down and we want to do that and we want to encourage that and that's great. Um, I feel like we're always doing fancy footwork and like where does the back end work live <laughs> versus where does the front end work live? Um, I think what you described, Alexander, that first step would just be front end, right? It's just moving things around. Um, so I can work with you this sometime today to create that issue, or I can create it and send it to you and have you give it a, a look-see. And then we can keep this existing issue that we were just looking at to add that additional back-end functionality of relating issues and building on top of what that front end first issue would be. Cool, okay, I'm gonna take a action item here. Lindsay to create new front end issue to move, create button. Yeah, and do we have, we have previous conversations about breaking out tickets for back end work versus front end work, right? Um, so yeah, this, this ticket can be the back end work and then there can be one or more tickets spawned off to, for the front end work. And whether we need another issue for the front end work or we can, or we just use oh, this yeah. issue, whichever one you guys decide. I have um, a comment on that in the retrospective. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Hey. Wanna share? Yeah, it's um, regarding, like, so sometimes when we use the same issue, uh, the front end work can get lost or the backend work because the backend engineer moves it to in dev and then I'm not I'm not seeing it for instance. Yeah, it's the so workflow maybe, states. Yeah, creating a new issue for the front end might be at least for this case. And I agree I, with you when it go ahead Alexander. No go. Oh okay. I I strongly agree with what Svash is saying because I know I have at least one ticket that has been in dev for me, but that I'm not actually working on because uh, the back end is working out right now. And so uh, it looks like I have a lot more on my plate, but really I'm like just sort of waiting for this. And then what do they do when their stuff's in review and Zuby Zab and stuff like that? This all makes sense. As long as you guys are okay with the overhead of even for small issues, breaking it down into multiple issues. I know when we first tried this, there was some feedback in retro around now the conversation gets dispersed across multiple issues right so you have to keep an eye on a lot of different uh comments and you know issue threads to make sure you're staying on top of things we've been talking you know the, the pms and ems around ways to use epics better which might help solve this so i think we might be getting a bit out of the scope of this uh group conversation for Thread Insights right now, but uh, Savash, this is, it's good feedback, and I think that we'll definitely be talking about this around Retro. Okay. Lindsay, I was actually gonna ask, should not necessarily promoting this one, but put a container epic around this. I know that that was one of the things we had talked about doing so that it was this particular issue and then whatever implementation issues that we want so we can close everything out all at once. I guess it's more yeah. of a question for for you and the group if that's a, a good idea before I make it. Question mark? Hearing Savash and Alexander's feedback, I'm going to encourage this. 
I think it'd be a good way to illustrate what we've been talking about with Tiago and Sam and Wayne around using epics and design issues and, and whatnot. We might not have a design issue per se on this one, and we might be stepping into it a little bit late in the workflow, but better now than never. Let's, uh, let's save this for retro, actually. <laughs> I think so this good. is getting into a more okay. of a retro question. Let's just keep moving on. I might still ask Matt to do this. We'll take it offline. I don't think it's going to really affect, uh, you know, how you guys pick up work and move things. It just, if we end up having three different issues around this, it just has a, a parent that they all roll up to that we can look at. So um, we have one more item on the list, but I admittedly added it in the middle of the day yesterday. So if I know Alexander is, you know, on top of things and he's already had a chance to look at it and ask some questions, I don't know if anyone else has. Um, we could take a look at it and just start asking some questions just to get comfortable with it. I just saw it for the first time yesterday and had a bunch of questions. So Alexander, do you want to do you want me to scroll down or do you want to just say your question? We can so to first start talking about what this is is on the in my first question, Matt, project level, just project level dashboard. Is that right? I think so, because it wouldn't really make sense from a group level since you would have multiple different multiple. pipelines. Yeah. And that's what later discussions seem to assume. Um, so on the project level dashboard, we'd be adding some indication around the state of the pipeline, when it last ran, if it was successful, if it failed, um, you know, link to it, who ran it. And, and we're talking about the default pipeline on this one, because it could be any of the pipelines. So um, in this case, I believe it is. Oh, actually, well, no, I don't want to say that the, now. The, the project security dashboard only gets populated from the pipelines ran the default branch, correct? Does yeah, so I think it should be just the default pipeline. Okay, yeah, I missed, I didn't, yeah, there, that's part. Um, all Quick this information though. is what? supposed to come with a query, right? Sorry, in the back end, this will just we will make another uh, query and then this will return the list updated scan status uh, by pipeline and then the description, the tool tip. So it's, it's gonna be one query, I guess. Yeah, we mean the GraphQL query, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, should be like okay. that, yeah. It's, so we don't remove vulnerabilities if the, so it's a manual resolve on the, on the vulnerabilities, right? They're manually removed. Okay. So they, they so it just be like, a, I mean, it says scan status stale, maybe like a scan status incomplete. There's so like a whole conversation regarding what yeah. they all have. So this is great. Yeah, I, I, I think everyone I should it. read the conversation and this is a long one as well. So I think there's, they go into great detail about the word stale in here. <laughs> but that's the right term. To I, use. Will I will read, I will read, I will read the issue. No, you're not the only one, Jonathan. Like, <laughs> I don't think most of us have looked at this yet. Um, so take a look at this. This is currently slated for 13.3. So we have plenty of time. Um, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. We'll bring it up. I'll, I'll just push it to next week and we are at the end of our half hour anyways. So does anyone else have any topics or questions or funny jokes? I have one question that is not related uh, to what we talk uh, right now. Um, I've requested, I received a request on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a sales request. Should I forward it? Uh, to PMs or just ignore them? It's for GitLab. Oh, like somebody wants to sell us something? Or, yeah, exactly, something like that. Personally, or I would, I would ignore they, they, it. They, they, sorry, 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 they, they, they want to use GitLab. They want to use GitLab. Um, if they're interested in GitLab, I would refer that over to, yeah, the, maybe the sales channel. Just ask and say, hey, I've got somebody. Um, I, just mention the name of the company. I wouldn't I respond even, directly. That's weird when people reach out randomly to people that they know are not in sales at companies like that. But. In a lot of contexts, okay. there's a handbook, a handbook entry. I know at least around like people looking for jobs or things like that, there might be a handbook entry that tells you exactly how to respond if you should at all. So, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone for your time. I'll share the recording. Talk to you later. Bye.